Hello my soccer universe. That was more like it in the Europa League uh, yesterday evening. Um, I'm in a better mood, I feel better, but I have to say, uh, yeah, the doom and gloom video, A, I was still not feeling all that well, doing better now, although still not quite over the hump, but I think I'm much better. Then uh, the games in the Champions League didn't necessarily go my way. I'm usually rooting for underdogs, so it's very hard to, <laughs> to have games go always your way. But most of the games were, it was, there was not much excitement. Boom, Europa League. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed, and I was even doing some other stuff uh, close by, I thoroughly enjoyed yesterday evening. Yes, it helps that there are 15, we had one on Wednesday, 15 games in two slots, so there's a lot of action in there as well. Yes, there were a few games that were already decided, uh, which unfortunately the zone decided uh, to put maybe too much emphasis on. But most of the stuff was really, really exciting and, uh, you know, you could, uh, you could not take your attention really off it. Which was not true for Wednesday evening. I mean, Spurs against Wolfsburg and again, I hear it, I listen to the totally football show, they call it Wolfsburger. No, it's not Wolfsburger. This means off from Wolfsburg. It's just Wolfsberg. Well, V-A-T, W-A-C. Anyway, uh, yeah, they had no chance against Spurs. <laughs> but who expected that? I mean, uh, Lask is a better team than Wolfsburg. Um, I'm saying this as a Lask fan, of course, but I, I think objectively uh, they're a better, better team. They lost 3-0 at Spurs. So it was not. Dele Ali with a great goal. Probably the goal of the um, whole round. And then, you know, there was this little chance and then Carlos Vinicius makes it 2-0. Uh, and from that moment on, it just goes downhill. Uh, Gareth Bale getting another one as well. So yeah, in the Europa League, Gareth is scoring. Then, wearing Ajax. Ajax Lille was unfortunately not one of the games that they decided to show. And I don't honestly really understand that because that was one of the better, better matchups here. David Klassen giving Ajax an early lead, putting them 3-1 up on aggregate. Then a little bit... Um, nerves when Yazici Yaziki converts a penalty in the 78th for the French league leaders, uh, make it 3 2 on aggregate. So, a uh, goal will send to overtime, but Neres laid on uh, secures the win for Ajax and Ajax to, uh, through again winning twice against Lille as it did in last season's Champions League. Then the game of the evening, I think, was Arsenal against Benfica. And yeah, I decided here to put Arsenal, the yellow jersey, up there because otherwise it would be all red and I wanted to, you know, it's too much red and they'll lighten it up a little bit up there. So yeah, um, I thought this was, and it, you know, the game was, of course, played in Piraeus, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, and then we will talk about the draw. Yes, I decided then because I did not really have the time to do it this morning or yesterday evening, the video I decided. Let's wait for the draw and give it a whole, uh, the whole uh, Europa League round of 32 plus draw experience. When Aubameyang made it 1-0 for Arsenal, I thought, yeah, that's going to pretty much settle it for Arsenal and they're going to run and run away with it. And Benfica playing in black with no red whatsoever. This was, Benfica has really an awful set of jerseys. And yes, I will try to get a Europa League jersey review in, but I'm not sure if I will ever get there. I really hope I will have the time. But Gonsalves, I think it was a free kick. Uh, yeah, I think it was a great free free game. Makes it 1-1 uh, for Benfica just before the half. And then I think they had, had him just to make it 2-1. Um, a goal by Aubameyang was then disallowed for offset right after the half. And then uh, Silva, I mean, the Arsenal defense completely caught out. Can run around the goalkeeper. Makes it 2-1 Benfica. At this moment, I think, whoa. I know that Benfica sucks in the league at the moment. But that, Ars that they will win against Arsenal. That would have been a big surprise to, to, to me, but also, you know, kind of saving Benfica season a little bit. And I was not, uh, I admit, I was not unhappy about that result because I, I really feel a, a big team like Benfica should have at, little, at least give them a fight and maybe even uh, get an, a little surprise in there. As I said, I'm all, you usually go for the outsider. And then Tierney, a few minutes later, good goal. Makes it 2-2, uh, but it really seems like Benfica can hang on. And 
eliminate Arsenal, which would, again, huge surprise. However, Aubameyang gets the winner for a deserved win overall, but I think um, the excitement, there was a lot of excitement there, it was a perfect 3 to win. Benfica had a shot, so I thought this was a really, really exciting game. I was always happy when they were switching over to that game. And yeah, Arsenal moving on and meeting a very interesting opponent in the next round. We'll talk about the draw a little bit later. Probably the upset of the evening was Molde's 2-0 win at Hoffenheim. Just look at the statistics if you haven't seen it. Uh, goal attempts 26-3 Hoffenheim. Shots on goal 9-2. Goals 0-2. Molde very, very efficient. I mean, it was not in really a goal. I mean, the shot by Uland Andersen was really nice in, in the 2020 to make it to, to make it 1 0, but at that time, Hoffheim should have uh, led already. But to be honest, Hoffheim didn't really have the great uh, chance either to equal them. Yes, they had many attempts. Yes, they tried. But I, I always had the feeling that Molde might actually hold out on, on, on this one. And it's, um, I mean, I'm not feeling sorry for Hoffheim one bit. But given that they were 3-0 up in the first leg, again, then they should have made it 4-0, and then they cannot score another goal. And they let Mulder back in, and then Mulder scores a 1-0, and very late on in stop, stop, stop shot, when, when they threw everything forward, makes it 2-0. That's an indictment. Hoffenheim, really, 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 really bad. Uh, Napoli, Granada, the result sounds much more interesting than the game most of the time was. I mean, uh, Napoli started well in Bakayoko with a nice pass into Zielinski. And Zielinski kind of calls, ca catches out the Granada defense and can make a really, really nice shot, 1-0. And if you think, yep, now Napoli will make a game game of that. But more or less with the first shot on goal, Montoro gets the equalizer for Granada. And then Napoli was really, really shaky. They come out in the sec second half to go for it. And Fabian Ruiz, after a nice and senior pass, makes it even 2-1. Uh, Gulam had come, come off. He had a humongous chance just at the beginning of stoppage time. And both halves had lengthy, lengthy stoppage time. Five and seven minute, minutes, uh, respectively. And I have to say, if Gulam makes the goal there, I actually think of now Napoli will go through. But Granada... Probably overall the deserved uh, team to go through, although I would really like to have seen Napoli move on, you know. I usually cheer for the Italian teams. Rangers was a little bit in danger at one time. I mean, it was 1-1 in the 32nd through Raf Rafaelov. Um, and you thought maybe Antwerp could do something or something, but no. In the second half, Rangers turned on Patterson and Kent. Uh, Patterson, I think, with his first touch of the game here, just come on 17 seconds later, he makes it 2 2 1. Then Kent may makes 3 1. Uh, Andrew pulls back and two penalties late. I think uh, very impressive overall from Rangers. And given that I know Antwerp played against Lask really well, that's a pretty strong performance by Rangers. Um, cannot say much for Schachter's 1 0 win over Maccabi Tel Aviv, except that the um, goal came through a Mirage penalty. Um, Via Real against Salzburg, another one of those. Salzburg actually had a chance uh, early on, again playing in those ugly, ugly, ugly jerseys. But this time they were not alone. We come to that later as well. Uh, Berisha gives them the lead after the goalkeeper Via Real did not make a good figure. But you know, I think both goalkeepers here really did not look good. Um, and then they had a huge chance to make it 2 0. Um, then Gerard Moreno with the Salzburg goalkeeper Stankovic making an excursion there where yeah, you don't know why more or less gifts via Real the 1-1 then you thought there was a penalty for Sal Salzburg but nope uh, it came for us from leg then on the hand and very late on again Stankovic caused a penalty and it's a 2-1 for via Real and in Salzburg they are reeling a little bit because they really thought they might have a chance and they really didn't I mean via Real was better and deservedly moves on should I talk about Milan? <sighs> that was the big downer of the whole whole thing. That Milan makes it a tough game at Gervenas Vesta, to me, was really uh, the disappointment of the evening. When the first disappointment said they had to play at home in white, uh, especially with those ugly white jerseys. Usually, this white jersey, beautiful. Usually, no, I don't like um, this Milan white jer jersey. I like the Germanis Vesta dark blue jersey though, so yeah, that was a slight uh, silver lining. 
When Milan get a penalty, and it was one of those really stupid penalties, handball, uh, Cassie converts it 1-0, I'm thinking, oh yes, maybe Milan can cruise, maybe they will come back from the derby. No, no, it wouldn't be Milan, it wouldn't be Ro Romagnoli giving uh, El Ferdu Ben a, such a wide bird that he just uh, has to pull it in. Into the, and then they were really hanging on. Uh, Ibrahimovic and Rebic come off uh, on, give a little bit more threat. I mean, you had a more focal point on the front with Ibrahimovic. They even had a goal uh, scored by Salamakas, which was disallowed by uh, offside. And then you even think when the Resta again goes down by a man, you gotta play his home and get the win. And I don't want to talk down to Ravenna Suesta by no means, but a team from uh, Italy. One of the top teams in Italy should not have as much trouble against uh, Giovanna Svesta. I'm sorry. I mean, Giovanna Svesta is a really, really, really good team. But uh, this Europa League in the group stage, they have not been all that uh, convincing. They had a good showing uh, a few years ago in the Champions League when they even got points off, the, off eventual winners Liverpool. So I know they can be dangerous. But still, uh, from my feeling on, Milan should have won the game in Belgrade or already you... You never can make it such a, you know, limping over the line affair where uh, Jovenza had actually more chances laid on. And to be honest, part of me, I really thought maybe they should just, uh, they should, Jovenza should, should, should win it. And I'm even at the point now that maybe this would have saved me in Milan a lot of trouble uh, in a way. But, you know. Move on, they do, but barely. Uh, Roma, on the other hand, no problem. Checo or or, or on get, get, gets one nil. I have to say, those Praga jerseys were excellent. This was probably one of the best jerseys in my image of, of the round. Uh, Pellegrini even misses a penalty, then Perez makes it 2 2 nil. Cristante, Ongol, Mayoral late on 3 1. Easy. The other German team also got eliminated. Uh, young boys playing in the same jerseys as Salzburg, except that they added for some pep their pants in these orangey tones. Uh, yeah, Leverkusen tried, but the Young Boys is not a bad team and they kept Leverkusen well at bay. And if you play your reserve goalkeeper, where you may get a big uh, blunder against Augsburg in the lead, Lomb is his name. What he did there, I mean, there was a long ball coming. He tries to catch it on the goal line and lets it loose. The ball bounces. Uh, in front of Sibajeo, who just has to stand there and head it in with the... <laughs> what a ridiculous goal! And then uh, they tried but couldn't. And Fasnacht gives Young Boys a 2-0 win, which made me very happy. As I said, I wanted Young Boys to go, go through. I was actually a little bit disappointed that this was such... Uh, that they let Leverkusen back in in the first leg. Uh, great, great story, I have to say. I'm very happy for Young Boys. As I said, the fans of Lask and Young Boys have a friendship. Dinamo Kiev wins it late against Club Rouge. A little bit surprising. Uh, Bojalski, who scored the first goal in Kiev, gets him through. And it's a little bit revenge for uh, eliminate, uh, when they got eliminated in the Champions League qualification last season. Dinamo Zagreb gets a goal through Orsic against Krasnodar, hangs on and uh, moves on. I think Dinamo Zagreb is one of those sleeper teams in there. I really, really have, have to say that might not be... Uh, an uh, uh, that might, might be a hard out for many teams, as is Slavia Prague, the other big surprise of the, of, of the evening. I mean, Leicester didn't look right, and Slavia Prague was well in the, in the game, and then when Stancho makes a nice cross, and the Leicester defense is totally caught out, and Provot can make it in in 49th, that more or less put Leicester on such a back foot that they couldn't really re recover, and then Ole Jinka sets up Sima and makes it 2-0, and Slavia Prague deservedly uh, moves on. Also something that, you know, I really would have liked to see Leicester move on, but I'm really happy when those upsets do happen. Uh, I, I really think this uh, shows, gives the Europa League a lot more value when uh, things like that happen. Uh, the, the big comeback of Real Sociedad was never going to happen, although they got a penalty. Uh, but Oyar Sabal uh, misses that one, a horrible shot wide up um, and then United's goal uh, by uh, Tuan Zebe was also uh, disallowed 
because there was a foul in the build-up, so it ends nil-nil. That was probably the least interesting game yesterday evening. I don't know why they had it in the program. And then another really, really exciting was PSV against Olympiakos. First half, rather even game, but Zahavi scores two. One great free kick in the 44th, and the first one was a rather messy uh, goalkeeping mistake. So PSV well on, 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 on the way, but for some reason, they decide to go defensive and that basically did them. They could hang on. Olympiakos hit twice the woodwork and then in the 88th they get the goal. I mean the goalkeeper had it already saved. I mean it bounced ahead and then a almost an impossible angle that Coca pulled it, pulled, pulled, pulled it in and puts Olympiakos through to the next round. So those were the games. As I said, lots of excitement. I really, really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this and this was much, much, much more entertaining than the Champions League. And before the draw, here are the chances of winning the Europa League. You see Manchester United uh, very much on top and clear ahead of Arsenal, who suddenly move up, and Roma, then Villarreal, Ajax, Spurs, and Milan. And I keep this in because this lets us really nicely compare now the chances after the draw. Here is the draw for the round of 16. Ajax, eBay. One matchup that I didn't necessarily like because those are two teams that I want to do well. Uh, Dinamo Kiev, when that came out, I said, please, Milan, 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 now we are Real. We are Real will have it easy. Roma Schachter Donetsk is very, very interesting because Fonseca, the Roma coach, used to be the Schachter coach before. So, interest there. Yeah. Olympiakos Arsenal, very, very interesting. Olympiakos eliminated Arsenal last season. Now, Arsenal had to play in Piraeus. So, a lot of stuff happening there. Is there another surprise in there for the uh, Greek champions? remains to, to be seen. I think Spurs is of course favorites against Zagreb, but that is not an easy game. And then when Manchester United came out, I knew, okay, this will be Milan, and unfortunately it's Milan. And for the second year in a row, in the round of 16, my favorite team, one of my favorite teams, has to play against Manchester United. Last season I was excited because I thought Lars can do something, uh, given how we were performing at this time. And if it wasn't Corona, I think we would not have lost at home 5-5. Five, 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 it would have been a much, much tighter affair. And we could have given United a little bit of run for the money, but I think United was still the better team. No question about it. I, the way Milan is at, at, at the moment, even if United is not come convincing, uh, they have no chances against United. This, I even see them losing twice. And I'm saying this with a lot of pain and hurt because United uh, in the 2000 when Milan played twice against United, those were some of, some of my favorite Champions League games ever. If the, way, the way Milan uh, controlled United. But yeah, uh, nah, I'm really, really, really not looking forward to that one. Then, then the other two are just uh, giveaways. Slavia against Ra Rangers might be interesting for the five year standings and Granada Molde should be easy. I mean, honestly, Yes, Milan against uh, Dinamo or Molde, that would have been my preferred uh, draw, of course, but you know. Now it's Manchester, Manchester United, Milan will not win the Europa League this year as well. And that's the last title that, title that uh, Milan uh, needs. And so with all that, we can now uh, check the changes in the um, for winning the Europa League. You see, actually... United is also not happy with Milan because their chances of winning went from 18 to 17. So uh, they are def definitely down. But their chances of qualifying for the next, next round went from a general 74 to 72. So not that bad. However, Milan all the way down to ninth spot. I mean, only 28% advancing. It's bad. Arsenal, Villarreal, Roma, Ajax and Spurs are the favorites to go in and I'm happy that I have all but one jersey from these and maybe I put the Villarreal is in this yellow Arsenal jersey up there. So yeah, here are the chances of winning uh, it all and uh, moving on to the next rounds. As I said, United big uh, fa fa favorites and we have Arsenal in there and Spurs, so we have three apparent Premier League teams up there. Um, let's see what Villarreal or Roma. I think Ajax is a team that could do something. Uh, here are the scheduled games for now, but I have to say this with a caveat. At the moment, Spurs and Arsenal are slated to have the return legs in London on the same day at the same time. I think they will move one of one of these, given that Spurs had to play now on Wednesday. Uh, it might well be that either they change uh, home field advantage or that they move one game of these to Wednesday, which at the time of the recording is not yet confirmed. Maybe tomorrow it will be, but we'll see. Um, 
all played Thursday 11th of March at 9. 9 o'clock will be again a great evening and I think there are really some nice matchups in there to make it interesting and then the return leagues are uh, played a week later. So also interesting there. I'm also interested to see how with COVID restriction if there are any of the English away games will be moved. Uh, remains to be seen. Maybe Milan will not even get a home home game against United which is probably the worst case scenario. Lots of Europa League but I want to give you my full thoughts. Let me know your thoughts um, about the Europa League action uh, this week. As I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Much better than the Champions League. Much more entertaining in every regard. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!